Guys, good morning. How are you? This is your girl T from God Will Deliver Ministries. See the t shirt to God be all the glory. God will deliver ministries. I'm coming to you this morning, guys. I promise you on when was Thanksgiving Thursday on Wednesday on my way to work. I did a video and yeah, I don't know, it did not save and I was going in, guys. Um, God gave me some good stuff, but it is okay. It is not for naught. God is going to give us what we need when we need it. And on today, he has given me some things that he brought back to my remembrance of some things that I went through to share with you guys. So let's begin. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, the God of heaven and the God of earth, the God that know all, the God that see all, the redeeming God, the saving grace, God, the God of mercy, the God of love, the God of peace. But you are also a God of war and wrath. God, and you are a holy God, and we are to approach you as such. God, you are holy. God, I come to you today asking that you mend the broken hearts, that you set the captives free, that you loosen our confused minds, God. I thank you that you are redeeming God, God, that we can stand still and see your salvation, God, that the fight is not about us, but it is about what we carry, God. And the fight is because we choose you on today, God, and we ask that you keep us. We need your keeping power on today that we don't go backwards like the dog who returned to their vomit, God. We don't want to go backwards, God. We want to press towards the mark of the high calling in you you, God. We want to move forward in ministry and the things that you have for us. God, we want to see the good things, the promises, the prophecies that were spoken over our life. God, you said your word would not return unto you void, but it would accomplish that thing in which you please, God. And we're so grateful for the accomplishment of your word, that we're not missing a beat, that we're right on schedule, God. Now we're asking that you keep us, keep our families, God. Keep those things that we are concerned Concerned with, but God give us laser sharp discernment of the things that are of you and the things that are not of you, and the knowledge and wisdom to know the difference. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. So, guys, yesterday, oh my God, like I literally, I was telling somebody, um, one of my girlfriends, my testimony of what I went through with the narcissist and how destruction destructive that spirit is, that spirit of Leviathan that we deal with and how it is draining and how mentally, emotionally, that sometimes you can't even gather yourself. It makes you at some point in time not even recognize yourself. Um, it's sort of like, I said it before, like dealing with the invasion of the body snatcher. If anybody ever seen that movie, how it cocoon, cocoons and wait until you fall asleep. And we can use this in a spiritual aspect. When we fall asleep, then that spirit wakes up and then it, it, it takes over our body. It camouflages. And then we walk around like, what's going on? Like, what just happened? So, um, guys, I remember this time when I was sitting at the table and I was studying or I was, I was doing something on a computer and the narc who I was with at the time, he had called me and he was already in a bad mood, guys. He was in a bad mood and I was just in a good mood. I was, you know, playing my music, doing my stuff on a computer and when he called me, um, soon as I said hello and he said hello, I like it was like everything just shift. I'm like, oh God, like let me brace myself. He's not in a good mood. And guys, why do we feel like we got to settle to brace ourselves for somebody that's not in a good mood to mess up our whole day? Why did we feel like that was healthy and that was God and we needed to put up with that? Even if we did not think that was God, we knew that was not God. We still put up with that. So whatever. We began to talk and guys, I don't know what came over me. And let me tell you something. I I almost went through a breaking point, guys. I didn't share this part of my testimony. I almost went through a breaking point. And this morning when I was in the bathroom in the mirror and I was asking God, like, God, like I literally 
almost lost myself. And we were just talking on the phone. Guys, there is a such thing as a transference of spirits. Um, and we were just talking on the phone. And after the conversation of him just messing up my day, I felt like I was defeated. I was discombobulated. I was just walking around like, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. And I immediately grabbed my keys and I went in my car and I went and I sat in the park. I was in the park. Um, and then the, when I parked, my car was directly in front of the tree. And again, guys, it explains, and I'm understanding more, the spirit of Leviathan. And guys, let me tell you something. God has given me revelation that I'm going to share with you guys. Um, he's still teaching me. And I promise you guys, when he finish, um, and it's going to be soon, I'm going to come on. And I'm going to explain to you guys you guys, it's going to blow your mind like it is still blowing my mind. It made me understand from just that phone call, that shift of that spirit. Remember, I told you to read Job 41. It explained a little bit of the spirit of the Leviathan and what he's capable of doing and everything that that's in his path he wants to destroy um i even went in deeper because there's other scriptures explaining this spirit of leviathan that is such a terror guys we were we was dealing with this spirit in this person um so this morning i'm gonna get back to the story when i was asking god god what was that 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 i was able to be shifted and he was saying like that's what that spirit do the narc wasn't my assignment. So because he wasn't my assignment, even though I was disobedient and I didn't leave when God told me to leave, God still kept me. But it still didn't stop that spirit from trying to do what God told me that this spirit was going to do. That that spirit wanted to kill me. Guys, and I promise you, this would have been the day. So I was in the park. And I, I was parked. And when I looked up, it was a gigantic tree in front of me. And the enemy was saying, yeah, he get on your nerves and he don't appreciate you. And he don't know who you are. And you're just trying to help him. Um, but I bet you if you crash into that tree and you have to go to the hospital, um, he's going to feel sorry. I promise you. This is what the voice of the enemy was telling me. Guys, I'm telling you, this spirit ain't nothing to play with. He was saying, just crash into that tree. Put your foot to the metal and crash into the tree. And guys, that's not it. This Satan dude began to show me my death. I seen myself hanging out the window of the windshield of my car. I seen myself because I, the impact was so hard that the enemy was telling me to do. I seen myself hanging out my windshield on the hood of the car. And I remember pleading with God saying, God, I don't want to die. I'm telling you guys, forgive me. Every time I tell this story, I get teary-eyed. And as I was saying, God, I don't want to die, the enemy just kept talking. Kept telling me how to do it. If you do it quick, you won't feel nothing. Guys, let me tell you something. People that are battling with the spirit of suicide, it is real. It is real, guys. The enemy, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He can't do it, but he can trick your mind to do it, to make you feel like this is what God wants. This is how people will appreciate you if you kill yourself. This is how people are going to see they should have loved you. Let me tell you something, guys. Satan is a liar. The Bible says that he is the father of lies. And remember this. God said, my sheep know my voice. And a stranger, it will not follow. God, I'm, guys, I mustered up enough 
strength, even in my discombobulation, to say, God, I don't want to die. But I knew it was the voice of the enemy trying to convince me that people would appreciate me if I kill myself. Guys, listen to this slide. How will I know they appreciated me if I died? So I began to say, God, I don't want to die. God, I don't want to die. Just send me help. I was sitting in a car saying this stuff, guys, crying, boohooing and crying. God, but I don't want to die. But God, I feel weak. I feel weak. God, but I don't want to die. This is what I was saying, guys. So anybody that is battling in weakness, guys, I know how you feel. But let me tell you something. God is our strength that is made perfect in our weakness. So I, I called my prayer sister, the one that I told you guys, that told me that God told her to tell me that that spirit that the narc was dealing with, she didn't say narc, that the, the spirit that he was dealing with wanted to kill me. This is the same young lady that I called my prayer sister. And she was at work. And I began to call her. And I said, I, I need help. The enemy is trying to make me kill myself. And she got up from where she was at with patience. Because at the time, she was working at the hospital. And she went in the bathroom and she began to pray. She began to pray. She began to pray. And I still just began to cry. But guys, after we hung up, I felt like that wasn't enough. I kept saying, God, I need more. That wasn't enough because I can't shake it. God, I can't shake this feeling. So I went home. I went home and my daughter was home. And I began to call one of my best friends and my daughter was there. Guys, and I just laid on the couch. And I laid on the couch. And I was helpless. I didn't have no more energy, guys. I knew I needed more. I knew I needed God to give me more strength. Because whatever it was with the narcissist, that spirit, it was winning. Guys, I was winning. And I just laid there. My daughter said, after it was over, Mommy, I was so nervous because you are the strong one. You always the one that's warring for people. So to see you helpless, I kind of felt helpless in what to do. So my best friend and, and uh, my daughter began to pray. They began to pray, and I just was laying there. And then the narc called. It was like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? And I couldn't explain it. And he was like, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. He was on his way to the house. So my best friend began to close my ears from hearing what the narcissist was saying. Then she hung up the phone, and they began to pray. And she had called my cousin, too. They came over there, and they began to pray. Guys, I was helpless. I was laying there, and I kept hearing what the Lord was saying when my prayer sister said that the spirit that he's dealing with want to kill me. So I was laying there on the couch. Everybody was going in. Guys, and I have a, a prayer shawl that when I lay before the Lord, God told me to cover myself. So my daughter went and got my prayer shawl and I was laying there and she covered me with the prayer shawl and they were still praying. And when she covered me, I began to say with the prayer shawl over me, God, I need help. God, I need help. God, you said your strength is made perfect in my weakness. I was able to muster strength to begin to speak God's word. Let me tell you something. God is not moved on our words. But God is moved on his word. That's why it's important that you know the word. Because God honors his word. He honors his word. 
So I began with the prayer shawl over me that my daughter covered me. When I began to give God back his word, I began to feel strength. When I was laying down, now I'm sitting up. And God immediately took the words that I was saying to tongues. So as I was speaking in tongues, God was strengthening me. He was strengthening me. He was strengthening me. And as he was strengthening me, guys, I was able to rebuke that spirit and everything that it was trying to do. I'm telling you, I felt my help come on for God, from God. But again, without God and with that narcissist, I begin to feel helpless. But with God, I begin to feel helpful. So I begin to rebuke. And at this time, guys, remember, I didn't know deep into depth of the narc, of the narcissist. God still was teaching me. However, I knew that it was a demonic spirit that had rank in hell. I knew that the, that spirit of Leviathan had rank in the marine kingdom. If y'all don't know nothing about marine kingdom spirits, I suggest y'all do the study. So as my help began to come and everybody began to pray in my house and we began to just begin to thank God because guys... Without a little ounce of hope and faith, the enemy would allow me to take my life. It's so important, guys, that you surround yourself around like-minded people. People think the scripture says, when the Bible says, do not be unequally yoked, it says with unbelievers, you have to. Be surrounded by people and what you believe. It's not saying that you don't you hate people that don't believe what you don't believe. But the Bible says, what does light have with darkness? Guys, what does the narcissist has with, with us? Darkness and light. It is the one thing, let me tell you that God revealed to me of the narcissist, the, 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 that Leviathan, in, 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 I think it's Hebrew or Greek. It's, it's a twisting spirit and it twists the, twists the truth. In deeper study, it also says that he is a whisperer. So he whisper lies in our ear. Go back to the love bombing. There were lies and it was twisted truth. But with that spirit of Leviathan, because it has, the Bible says the spirit of Leviathan has many heads. H-E-A-D-S. Many personalities. Many personalities. The heads. Many personalities. So it knew to camouflage for what we needed at that time. And it came and it twisted the truth. Those things that it was saying that it was going to do and those things that it was lying about doing for us, it made us believe it. But believe this people of God, those things, yes, we, was, we are going to have through the mate that God has for us. You men and you women, God has the promises for us. But what is the devil's job? To stop God's promise. So he always sent a distraction before the promises. But in this season, I challenge you to know the character of God. And don't ignore the warning signs. Don't ignore it. If it don't look like God, who God said he is in the Bible, guess what? It's not God. Guys, we always have a tendency of what we like. We put God on it and say, yes, God gave me this. Yes, this is God. Just because we like it and God is saying, no, no, that ain't me. That's not who I have for you. That's not what I have for you. That is not where I'm telling you to go. That is not the ministry I want you to be in. Look for me. And if you don't see me, it's not me. Guys, 
we can't afford in these last and evil days to not know the character of God. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. Guys, we were sorrowful dealing with the narcissist. And we called it God. We called that a blessing from the Lord. The Bible says, woe unto you that call evil good and good evil. They were evil. But because we wanted that thing to be right, we called it God. That was not the character of God. The narcissist does not have the character of God. It only twists the truth. But then he began to show us who he was. But we try to hold on to the love bombing that we have now contracted a soul tie with. We contracted that thing. We signed on a dotted line to deal with that thing. And we got soul ties. So guys, I challenge you in this season. To pray against the soul ties of the lies, words. People think you can only get a soul tie sexually. You could get a soul tie through people, words, deeds, and actions. Pray against those things that we tapped into that was not God. God, forgive me for tapping into those things that was not you and I called it you. God is faithful to forgive us. Guys, I'm telling you, God got some good things for us and it's coming. And how do we know it's coming? Because the enemy is sending distractions full speed ahead. Some of you guys over the holidays were weak. And even though I wasn't able to post a video, I was praying for strength for you. Guys, please, please. Please, guys, we have to get in our word. We have to get in our word. We have to repent always. We have to pray always. We have to trust Jesus. God always and gave me this too. Because a lot of times we are so gung-ho for people that say, God, what's his name? Jesus, Yahweh, Yeshua. People, we have to say those names because that's like me going in a room and, and, and I'm at a conference and I'm at, and it's a doctor conference. And I say, will the doctor stand up? It's going to be many doctors that stand up. But if I say, Dr. Frank Lewis, stand up, only one person can stand up. So it's the same thing with God. We say God and People come and say, God, and we so gung-ho that they're talking about our God. When Satan is a God to people, Buddha is a God to people. But if I say, Yahweh, the creator of heaven and earth, <laughs> my God, there's only one who can take that credit. There's only one who can bear that name, who sent the son, Yahshua. Uh, to die on the cross because the Bible says that they have to bear witness that Jesus died on the cross and he rose in three days and he sat on the right hand of his father. There's only one Jesus Christ. Now let me tell you this. The Bible says that Paul said, what Jesus are you talking about? Because I said, God, how can some people say the name of Jesus but they don't hold or they're not casting out demons but they are coming in the name of Jesus again the Bible says many will come in my name and deceive many it is the power that God allowed the person to possess that has power to use the name of Jesus you guys understand what I'm saying so we be deceived because the Bible says that many will come in my name and deceive many. So many are coming in the name of Jesus, but they don't, they don't possess that power of the Holy Ghost. They possess that power of the Kundalini spirit. Which deals in magic and the marine kingdom and divination and sorcery. And it looks like God. But we are to have discernment. 
to know, mm -mm -mm, baby, you a witch, you a warlock. That ain't God. Moses and Pharaoh bearer. Moses threw down his rod. Pharaoh's serv servant threw down his rod. Guys, it was the same. It turned into the exact same serpent. What was God? What was divination? The only reason how we knew, because Moses' rod had the power of God in it, swallowed that spirit of divination. So, guys, when the narcissists come, we ought to know mm, something sitting right with me. Don't ignore the warning signs that God give us with that discernment. Guys, I just had to come and share this video on today to encourage and to, to tell you to keep your hand in God's hand. Guys, we have not seen perilous times yet. People are saying this and people are saying that and people are being confused on what to follow. You want to know what to follow? Get in God's word. Get in God's word. How do we know the voice of God through God's word? People, God will never contradict his word. God's word is already set. He's never going to go back and change it. If it's written, when you hear a prophet say this, go back and see what God's word has to say about it. Uh-uh, he off. That's not God's word. God's word is not about prosperity. It's not. It's about Christ crucified. Christ rose. Repentance. Love. Repentance. Love. Repentance. Chastisement. Guys, I love you. I love you. I love you. God will deliver ministry. G.W.Deliver2020. Please share and like this video. Um, thank you to all my subscribers. Not my subscribers. I don't say my. Thank you for God's subscribers. This is God's ministry. This is God's channel. I say what he say. Because guys, Tammy have nothing to say. I can only move when God say move. I can only say what God say say. The Bible says it, it is because of him. We live and we move and we have our being. It's never about me. Never, never. I'm just a servant that is willing, that want to be used. Guys, as you are, you are servants. And you're learning as I am learning. God reveals to all. God said, I give to all who ask liberally. This is the word of God. And that's freely. I give to all who ask freely. Ask God to reveal the mysteries to him. But let me tell you something, guys. And asking God to reveal the mysteries, we can't live any type of way. We got to have clean hands. We got to walk upright before God. If you don't know what upright is, pray and ask God, God, what does upright look like to you? Because the world um, definition of upright, God, I don't see you in that. Fast. Pray. God is dealing with me with prayer. Brace yourselves in prayer in this season. God is coming. I love you guys. I am praying for you. I pray that you are praying for me. Um, put your whole armor on as you go out. And when you get up in the morning, when you set foot on the ground, we have another day to get it right, guys. We got another day of mercy and another day of grace to get it right when we are in the land of the living. Guys, we are living the best times of our life. We ain't seen the blessing of the Lord yet. I love you guys. Um, I, I pray against every witch and every warlock that deemed to try to come against this channel. In the name of Jesus, I send the fire of Yahweh to you. You have no place on this channel. Um... Um, trying to put hex and curses over people's mind. You take your hand off and I 
bind you in the name of Jesus. And I loose your peace, God. I loose your understanding. I loose your protection over God's people on this channel and other channels, God, that is walking up right before you, that is speaking the truth in the name of Jesus. You guys, remember today is a great day to have, today is a good day to have a great day in Jesus Christ.